Hello, Wolfpack Nation. This is Chancellor Randy Woodson coming to you from a new series called The Red Chair Chats. And, uh, you know, this is a special time for us because we're going to sit down and talk to some amazing people and talk to them about what they love about NC State. The thing all of them have in common is a great connection to this great university. And today is no exception. We're really thrilled to have a chance to sit down today with your men's basketball coach, Coach Kevin Keats. Coach, how are you doing? Uh, Chancellor Woodson, I am great. Uh, I'm very grateful that you're having me on. I know how important this is and excited about being able to talk about NC State in the future. Well, you know, when I say how are you doing in, in this, uh, and I, look, I, I'm like you, I'm tired of everybody talking about how unprecedented this time is, but it truly is. We've, I don't know about you, but I wasn't here in 1918. So this is my first global pandemic. Uh, and it's been a heck of a challenge for, for you and your team. So really, how are you doing? And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Chancellor, I am doing great. Um, I'm blessed. Um, I woke up this morning, both of us, we're here to be able to talk. Uh, I will say this, it's probably been the most challenging year in 25 years of being in this profession. And, and that means a lot because uh, we don't know exactly what our kids go through. Um, just being able to play basketball, it was a blessing because at one point, I didn't even know if we were going to play any games this year. And so I try not to complain. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a really, really tough, unique year. And we all just need to help each other get past this so we can get back to being normal again. Well, and, and I want to compliment you and your, your coaching staff and all the managers and trainers for everything you've done to keep the team healthy and to keep them focused. And it's great to see them have a chance to play in the off season, in the postseason, not the off season, uh, and to get some experience, particularly for those young guys. You've got a young team and, and we're excited for our future. So tell me a bit about what you and your your colleagues have learned through this. But I, I tell everybody every day as we, as we sit back and we do things differently because of this virus, you know, what are we learning through the process and what have you learned? Well, Chancellor, that's an unbelievable question. I would say the biggest thing for me is patience and to, to be able to adjust on the fly because at some point we, you know, we all have had to become patient. There have been so many pauses. Um, I've been able to, to be a better listener to my players and understand um, exactly what they're going through because you know we see it on the outside but we don't know what they're going through on the inside and we don't know what their families are going through and so for me it's uh, we've had to adjust a lot of things just at the spur of the moment and I think that's one of the things that I've learned um, I've never seen anything like this in my entire career and hopefully we never see anything like it in the future but I just you know I, I've learned to care more um, because you know this thing is um, Life is not guaranteed to you. Basketball is not guaranteed to you. And, and I've been humbled by that. Well, we've, we've all been humbled by this. And, and it's great to, uh, to hear you reflect on it. And, and I can assure you, no one wants to get out of this current environment more than I do. Trying to run a university during this pandemic has been an interesting challenge. It's, it's amazing how many experts we now have that are epidemiologists that I never thought they were epidemiologists before because they certainly are sending me a lot of opinions about how to manage things. So I'm sure you've had a few of them in your, your life too. Um, well, look. Let me say this too, uh, and I wanna jump into this is, uh, your, your leadership from the top has been incredible. Um, I don't know if you realize that your, your, your emails, um, the Zoom calls that you, you've been on with our athletic department and probably the entire school is one of the reasons why NC State's been able to cope with this in a better way than most. And I want to thank you for all that you've done because um, you've helped a lot of folks and, and especially our athletic department get through, you know, the majority of this pandemic. Well, thank you. You know, Coach Keats, uh, I need to remind the viewers, although I don't know that they viewed this, uh, this is our We've done this before, and uh, we started this series right before the pandemic, and my first guest on the first Red Chair Chats was Coach Kevin Keats. 
So uh, I don't know if you recall this, Coach, but and hopefully our viewers today will get a, a little video clip from that previous interview. Uh, literally, it was one of the last things that we were able to do face to face before this pandemic hit. But my recollection is we played a, a wicked hot game of horse. That's right. And, I, you know, I have memories of it. It's faded, but I can't recall who won that game. All right, are we, we're going to play Wolf. Oh, that looks good. Oh, oh sure. No, that looks it's good. It's a four. You got to get a little bit more. It's a four. You got to bend your knees a little bit. All right, now put the ball above your head. Hey, now. Bend your knees. And There's going to be everything in me. <laughs> knees. Get it. Oh. Air Get ball. It. Get it. Good shot. All right. All right, man. Good game. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Well, I'm going to go on record and say, Chancellor, you won the game because I learned a long time ago never to beat your boss. That's what I tell the players. Never beat your coach. And so no matter... No matter if I made a few more extra baskets than you, you still won that game. I just want you to know that. All right. And, and when you go up, this elbow has to lift, and you got to elevate your shot. Too and close, man. Yeah. No, come in. One hand. Just one hand. Put... Oh, no. Oh. No. Oh. Scoop. Yeah. You had to remind me of my eighth grade basketball camp shooting skill clinic. Uh, and it took me a while to get it back. Uh, I was on target, but well short uh, of the of the goal. So I do appreciate uh, you remembering it uh, the way I did. But I think, in fact, our viewers will find that you won that game. Well, you were you were a little rusty, and I've had a little <laughs> advantage. I've been I was in the gym a little bit more than you. But I wouldn't want to play you now, because I think right now, I think you're probably a better player than me and horse. Well, I appreciate it again, but I haven't spent the pandemic shooting baskets. But I, <laughs> maybe I should have. Maybe I should have. Well, let's get into some of the lightning round questions. And this is, uh, this is the time when the, the real Kevin Keats comes out. And, you know, Coach, one of the things that I was thrilled when you got here uh, and our fans are so grateful for everything you do. Um, I saw these T-shirts coming out on, on all the young people surrounding the court, and I can't wait to get them back, and I know you and your team can't either. But they had a T-shirt on that said, uh, Coach Keats is a winner. How does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel great. You know, Chancellor, it was one of those things when um, I was introduced and at the press conference, and – it's one of those things that just took off. And I was talking in third person and I said, Kevin Keats is a winner. Because they got to understand one thing and I want you guys to understand this as your new coach. Kevin Keats is a winner. And I wasn't just talking about basketball and I know everybody you know, associates it with basketball because I'm the basketball coach. But I was talking about in life. I was talking about, you know, uh, as a husband, as a father and as a basketball coach. And it's, it's great that it's caught on. The crazy thing about it is all of those great T-shirts were passed around and I never got one myself. Yeah. Well, well I'm going to get you one. All right. You, you, I, you, but you know what? You do have some fine shoes. I, I got us. Right. Y'all seen the shoes, haven't you? Oh, man. All right, Coach. Now, look, we're, we're in the early stage of Red's Chair Chats. This is first episode. And we're trying to think about how the producing of this program going forward. And what I've been talking to my producer about is what's my walk-up music? You yeah. know, how am I going to come to the chair? Absolutely. And, but, but I don't have that question for me. I have it for you. What's your walk-up music? My best one, my walk-up music is Basketball by Curtis Blow. And um, a lot of people won't know who Curtis Blow is. But I know his favorite thing was basketball is my favorite sport. And it goes on and he rhymes about it. Uh, you know, I grew up in the era where uh, when the rap music was rap music, but they were talking about something that they've experienced. And I think that, um, Chancellor, I'm going to send you that. And so you can listen to it because you're more than welcome to use that as your walk up music also. Oh, well, I, we're, we're in the market. So you send it along, I'll have the 
producers check it out. We'll, we'll see what resonates. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they run up and down the court, just like I'm the king on the microphone, like Dr. J and Moses Malone. I like slam dunks and take to the hoop. My favorite play is the alley-oop. I like the give and go. I like the pick and roll. It's basketball, Mr. Curtis Blow. I followed your career and when, when you were uh, being recruited here at NC State, as, as you would expect any good chancellor, I, I learned a lot about Kevin Keats. And one of the things that I appreciate so much about you is that you've always been impactful in young men's lives. And going back to your high school coaching days throughout, throughout your career. And so tell me a bit about, you know, what motivates you to do this work? Yes, if I, I've always said this, if, if my guys leave away from here and the only thing they can do is dunk a basketball, or shoot a jump shot, then I've failed. And, you know, I, I'm looking for, when we recruit guys, this is an unbelievable university and great leadership, but I'm looking for folks who fit our culture. Uh, we punch the clock. And so when the guys leave me, I want them to become, you know, great husbands one day, great fathers one day. And by the way, have a chance to play basketball to make a living for their families. And so one of the things I pride myself on is just being picky in the guys that we bring to our university uh, because it's important. We've, we've got a great place here. Um, it's not just about the athletics. I know that's a big piece of where a lot of the guys come here but they've got to be able to fit into our university and do all of the right stuff. And uh, we ask them to be leaders. We ask them to be role models. And those are the type of kids that I want to end my program. Well, we were talking before we started filming today about, uh, you know, I, I took this virus on and literally took it on uh, because I go home every night and have dinner instead of go out and, and do the work of the chancellor because we don't have all these events. And so, you know, I got to get over with your trainers and take care of my COVID-19 <laughs> weight gain. But how do you do it with all this ice cream you guys eat? Where did that come from? So that, that road, those road wins that we had consecutively in a row, that was the best thing in the world. Our kids loved it. But I tell you what, the amount of weight that I picked up from ice cream. Uh, and I don't, just for the record, I'm lactose intolerant. So I don't eat the ice cream when they order it. My wife has been able to find um, some lactose free ice cream. And so when I get home, I get mine. And mine's a little different because I can go back to the refrigerator and I can get two or three cups of it. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of movies. And I've seen a bit more, you know, being spending more time at home with my wife, I think she's ready for this virus to be over for that reason. Uh, but tell me, uh, if, if you could play in a movie, what movie would you have been in? And what actor would you have been? Oh, look, you don't have time for movies, do you? Well, I haven't watched many movies, but I love everything that Denzel Washington does. Really? I mean, he, he's so smooth. Um, you know, all of his movies are great. I go back to the older movies, uh, you know, like Hoosiers, anything. You got, of course, I'm going to like something that has something to do with basketball. Um, that's, that was one of my favorite movies way back when. But as far as actors and movies, uh, I'm going to always go with Denzel, Denzel Washington. He's smooth. And by the way, your wife has a, she has the right to kick you out of the house. We've been around too much. Um, and what people don't know is what an outstanding um, artist she is. Um, she's got some great artwork. And I saw that one day I came over to your office and she was hanging up some artwork. And well, there's some right behind me. Right there. Look at that. That's beautiful. Well, that beautiful. thanks for pitching. You know, I, I, um, one of these days I'm going to retire and I'm going to need that to be our primary source of income. So I appreciate you uh, putting a plug on Red Chair Chats. Talk about the attire for coaching this year. I've, I've heard a few, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan, so I tend to watch a fair amount of uh, basketball. And I've heard a lot of coaches, including you, talk about uh, the change in the attire this year, the, um, a bit more casual. Uh, what do you want to do in the future? You like holding on to that, or you ready to go back and look Kevin Keats sharp? Well, Chancellor, the, the two best dressed guys on this campus, obviously, is um, yourself and me. 
Um, we look great. Your, I've seen your blazers. I've seen your suits. I've seen your shirts. They all look great. And I have some really good suits. But I got to be honest with you, I kind of like this style that we had this year. And I don't know if we'll go back. And I don't know if I want to go back because it's, it's a little bit more easier. Um, I always ask someone, how did basketball coaches end up wearing suits at basketball games opposed to polos? And I don't think anybody can ever give me an answer. Um, so if I had my vote, and I never would have said this at the beginning of the year, I would love the polos and the pullovers. Are, are, uh, are coaches voting on this? Is this something that? Yeah, we, we voted on it. Uh, our ACC coaches, we voted on to go with this look. This is the look that the NBA went uh, to early in the year. And we decided that we were going to go with this. And uh, it just worked out. It looked good. And of course, our sponsors, uh, Adidas, they're, they're going to they love it because we get a chance to wear their apparel on the sideline. Well, if I, if I get a vote, uh, I like the look. And I, I like you uh, in, in your uh, athletic attire, running up and down the front of the bench trying to help the young men achieve at a high level. Um, let's talk a little, let's go back in time. Let's talk a little bit about advice. What's some of the best advice you've ever had? You know, my, I, I've had a lot of advice. Um, the biggest thing is I thought when you start driving and it equates to your future, you know, I was 15, 16 years old and trying to learn how to drive. And, and soon I was, as I was driving, I was looking right over the hood. And I don't know if it was my dad. I don't know if it was an instructor. They said, when you drive, look out as further as you can. Don't look over the hood. And I've always looked at that as something to say, look at what your future and build towards your future. Look, look way ahead opposed to looking right in front of you. And so I've always taken that as, you know, build on the future, start by baby steps. Um, you may start by looking over the hood, but eventually you're going to raise your eyes and you're going to look as further as you can. And that's what I've tried to do in my entire life. That's what I've tried to do here at NC State, you know, going just finishing year four, we wanted to build and we wanted to build from an academic standpoint, from a culture standpoint, and then from a basketball standpoint. So that's been some of the best advice I've ever had. All right, now here's a big question. What'd you learn how to drive? What was the first car you learned how to drive in? That's, oh, Chancellor. You, that's, that's a good I, one. That's a great, that's, that's a great oh, one. You gotta love it. My, my first car that I learned how to drive was a Cutlass Supreme. Ooh! It was a color supreme. What, what year? That's a big car. I want to say it was a 78. I want to say well, somewhere that's, else. That's a pretty big car. It's a big car. And here's the key to it. Uh, my, my dad gave me the color supreme after I learned how to drive it. You didn't need a key to start it. And so once all my friends found out that you didn't have a key to start it, they would jump in and steal my car every now and then. But it was, it was, it was the best thing I've ever had. Uh, I loved it. Uh, I, if I could one day, I would love to own a 78, maybe 79 color Supreme. You know, when I was growing up, my granddad had a, we called it, um, um, what, what, uh, Electra uh, 220, what was it? Electra 225? Yeah. yeah. And uh, that was a ride. That, I learned to drive on a car that was so big uh, you couldn't park it today. I don't think parking spots are big enough for those cars. All right, so we're, we're talking about, you've talked about some of your advice from your past. What, what kind of advice do you give these young men that, that work with you all the time here at NC State? Well, I, I try to tell them to believe in the process and to be really patient about everything. Our kids today, they live in a microwave society and they want everything to happen right away. And so I tell them just to trust the process um, and let their self mature a little bit. You know, we live in a world where these guys expect to, they think they're gonna walk in from high school and average 20 points a game. Um, that's, not, that's not gonna happen, especially at this level. Um, from a personal standpoint, we tell them that you gotta lock in and be good people because everything you do and every opportunity that you have a chance to talk to someone, you're doing a commercial on yourself. 
and you want those folks to be able to say something good the next time someone else asks a question about them. Uh, I just, I, I ask them to be really good folks and be really good role models. Um, our guys, whether they want to or not, they're the biggest guys and most visible guys on campus. And we want those guys to act accordingly. Well, and, and you've done a great job there because watching the young men that work with you every day mature during their time at NC State is really, it gives me a lot of pride and I know it does to our fans. Um, so coach, let's talk a little bit about, um, I, I know when we hired you, um, everybody, your whole family was, was dressed in red. I hope you like red because we're excited to have you at NC State and we love seeing that color on you. I'm telling you, Chancellor, that red is so beautiful. And I, I remember the day like it was yesterday. You know, um, we were all dying to get that red on. It was beautiful. You know, I, um, you look great. I remember walking in there, having a chance to meet you in a private room. And we sit down right before we went to the press conference. And, um, you know, red's beautiful. We even talked to some of our future guys that were recruiting. And one of the things I say is, man, everyone looks better in red. Everybody. Red's one of those universal colors that everyone looks better in red. Yeah, it, no doubt. Well, Coach, uh, it's been great to have you on today. We're grateful for your leadership. I tell you that all the time. And I mean it. Uh, we really appreciate all you do uh, for our team and for the players and, and how you represent our university. And we're proud to have you here. Any parting shots for the Wolfpack Nation, our community? Parting shots is that NC State University is in an unbelievable place because of you, Chancellor Woodson. Um, your leadership is um, second to none. Um, I will say to our Wolfpack fans, uh, we will get back to normal. We miss you. We love you. Uh, can't wait till you get back into a packed arena at PNC and be able to jump up and down and scream. Um, everyone, please do their part. Uh, we will defeat COVID-19 and um, there are better things to come. And I will tell everybody, go Pack. Coach Keats, it's been great to be with you today. We appreciate all you do for NC State. Wolfpack Nation, it's been great to have you for this edition of Red Chair Chats. This is Chancellor Randy Woodson. I love being with you, love talking to Coach Keats today, and look forward to the next session. Thank you for all you do for NC State. Go Pack.